from whatever part of the world you are joining me, it's a bright sunny afternoon in Nigeria at this moment. So I say good afternoon to you and welcome to the live broadcast by Born to Lead. Um, thanking you for coming on live with me at this hour. It's an honor and a privilege to be your servant over at this end to serve you with leadership tips that will help you um, grow your leadership, help you stabilize your leadership, and help you make a great impact, a great um, um, influence over the lives of people with your leadership. The essence of leadership is to be able to grow others to become leaders around you. Um, John Maxwell once says that, uh, said that it is easier to lead leaders than to lead followers. Uh, I, I reckon that a number of us are more excited in leading followers than in leading leaders. But the essence of leadership is to build up others to become leaders just like um, we are. So this afternoon, I'm glad and grateful to you all for agreeing to come online with me. Uh, today, we'll be looking at um, a topic that we started last week, which is um, a topic that has to do with the body language of leaders. Now, not many of us know that um, we can communicate and communicate effectively with um, our bodies. So, for that reason, a number of us take for granted what it means to communicate with our bodies. So today, we're going to build up on some tips that will help us uh, maximize our leadership skills, help us maximize our leadership ability, uh, give us an insight, all right, as to how important our body languages are. So um, if you are there and with me, please come along as I make an effort to identify um, or help us identify some of the tips that are necessary for uh, good body language, you know. Now, again, not many of us know and realize that we all have body languages. There's a way you would speak, but um, with all passion and interest, but your body will tell me that you're not interested in what you're doing, all right? Or your body will tell you you're not excited about the things that uh, um, you, are, you are engaged in. So um, today we're going to talk about that style, that form of, uh, of body language that uh, should help you, you know, become a better person when it comes to communicating your body language or using your body language to um, communicate what you need to um, communicate. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for being a part of today's lesson. And um, I, would, I would be excited to just continually give you the tips that will, will, will really help you and help me become better leaders wherever we find ourselves. So let's move on now to um, the tips that I think will be helpful. But before I go to the tips, let me state this out categorically, that body language is very critical. All right? Body language is very critical. And Bong says this, body language is one of the most important ways that we communicate with others. Yet, it is probably the skill that receives the least amount of attention by individual. Now, growing up and um, under a disciplinarian father, my dad always, uh, my dad always, well, not always, the, took time to ensure that he disciplined us, all of his children, and put us in, in proper perspective. And um, there was never a time my dad promised to beat me that he didn't beat me. Never a time. And you see, every time that he promised to beat me, I just looked at the expression on his, on his face 
and I knew he was serious about it. My dad was such that every time he opened his mouth to talk about beating me, he ensured that he did it. So his language matched his action. That's how fundamental, that's how critical body languages are as far as communication is concerned. Now, right? You will know that such people were not serious about beating you. You know that such people were never serious um, about, about, about beating you. Now, as, 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 as someone who is a leader, as someone who will communicate, your language has to match your words. Your language has to agree with your words to be able to send the right message across to people. All right? To be able to send across the right message to the people. So, and Bohm says, body language is one of the most important ways that we can communicate with others. Yes, it is probably the skill that receives the least amount of attention by individuals. All right? So, we need to be very careful how we communicate with our body language. Now, I'm making some movements, and this is um, deliberate, okay? This is deliberate. The essence is, I'm attempting to let you know how critical how to be viewed by every one of us. When I do certain things that shows to you that I'm either not interested in the communication or I am distracted in the communication. I do not need to say those things by words. Just by actions, you will tell whether I'm interested in what I'm talking about or it, or body language can and is very critical to what level of uh, communications that we make, all right? This we must take note of every time. What are some of the tips then that should help us get by? Tip number one is that we must smile and smile at appropriate times and smile appropriately. Isn't this interesting? sends across a message to people. So tip number one is that you, might, you must be mindful of uh, the way that you even smile. And like I said here, yeah, you must smile appropriately, in appropriate regard, in appropriate manner, uh, knowing the people you are dealing with, all right? Sometimes you are dealing with people and them... Um, they are smiling unnecessarily. You can tell. Okay? Whether they are serious or not. And whether they are playful or not. So, not smiling at all can be considered as austere. Now, I have a friend. And if I say this, those who know him will know what I'm talking about. All right, we had the privilege of sitting um, over a youth group and um, as leaders in the youth group, that's what I mean. And um, he always had a 
seemingly stern face or serious looking face. He rarely smiled with people. Now, you needed to come very close to him to know that he was an exceptionally friendly person. You needed to hear his story, know his background, and perhaps determine why he constantly had a frown on his face. But the bottom line was, in spite of the fact that he was a people-loving person, he really had a smile on his face. And I had got many complaints from people who thought he was too serious for their liking. People who were scared of getting close to him or drawing near to him because they felt his austere-looking face would send them away. In fact, they determined that he wasn't friendly. But in reality, he was exceptionally friendly. And it took a lot of talking. It took a lot of communication to get him to realize that his face sent people away. So this is how critical um, this uh, non-verbal communications can be. All right? You can be friendly, but your face or your body language will say otherwise. Now, the reverse of this is to smile too much. When you smile too much, people consider you as unserious. When you smile at the slightest joke, at the appearance of someone, even at things that are wrong, when you smile at them, people think you are too unserious. People consider you as being unserious. So, you must smile and smile appropriately. And smile based on the context. Okay? You must know where you are and know whether smiling is allowed and to what quantity or quantum, if you, need, if, if you allow that, that you need to smile. When you are in a courtroom, for example, there's a limit to which you can smile. There's a limit to which you can stare the judge or look the judge in the eyes and smile. Because sometimes that just communicates that the judge is unserious or that you do not know the gravity of the reason for which you are in court. But when you stand on the podium to address a crowd of people, a crowd of workers that you want to assuage onto a vision, you want to um, get them to understand certain things, you've got to smile. You've got to smile. So smiling is the first tip. An appropriate smile is better than frowning your face. Now, William Arthur Ward says this, a warm smile is the universal language of kindness. A warm smile. Well, I do not know of anyone who smiles with their face frowning. That would be strange. That would be an absurdity. But William of a word says, a warm smile is the universal language of kindness. There are people who are giving alms to others, but frowning. Those who receive the alms get scared. But there are people who have turned others down, smiling. And the person turned down didn't feel bad. In fact, the person turned down, embraced it as being sincere, acknowledged the person as being truthful, and walked away, even though he or she were, 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 were turned down. So a warm smile is the universal language of kindness. And every true leader, every good leader, every operational leader ought to have a warm smile on his own or her face and that is not limited to the people you know or, or well the people you know alone you must also give a warm smile even to strangers and to visitors this helps me so much 
Because there are days I walk on the street, people greet me, I do not recognize them, I do not remember who they are, but I put, on, put up a warm smile on my face. I put up a smile on my face as if I recognized who they are until I begin to ask for their names. And then they tell me. But while I was lost, I put up a friendly face to them. All right? So a warm smile is universal language of kindness. A warm smile. Tip number two is a firm handshake. What does this do for you and for me as leaders? First, to build your self-image, you need to join the smile, firm handshake, and a compliment club. That's by Zig Ziglar. Zig Ziglar was a famous motivational speaker. He had spoken to hundreds of millions of people across the globe. Now, he realizes that to build your self-image, you need to join the smile, firm handshake, and compliment club. We have just spoken about smile and the advantage that smile gives to you. Oh. A smile gives to you a firm handshake will create a firm first impression. Last week, I talked about first impression. I said first impre impressions are created within the first seven seconds of an interaction. Now, it's not humans who sat down and timed that and said you must do that within seven seconds. It's just by nature, we are wired to make our first impression within the first seven seconds of an interaction. The first seven seconds of this broadcast was key and critical to the rest of the broadcast. The first impression you have of me will determine so much as to how you relate with me. You know, a few years ago, I, 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 I worked for a mommy while I was still going to court. Now, in the course of the walk, all right, somewhere middle, midway through the case, the mother opened up to say to me, she regrets not contacting me longer than she did. And I said, why? Then she let me know that many years ago she had intended to contact me over a, over a similar case, but that someone discouraged her and said, if you contact him, he will charge you so much um, and um, you may not get what you want. But somewhere along the line, she decided to contact me and in contacting me, uh, we got, we became friends, up to date we were friends. And the charges I gave to her were not as much as she had expected. And the commitment I had in the case was marveling to her. Now, what am I aiming to say? I'm saying that the first impression she had of me took her some time to break away from. The first impression that people have of you takes time for people to break away from. And that first impression is created within the first seven seconds of an interaction. And we're saying that a firm handshake, and I'm not saying a handshake that will break somebody's hand. I'm just saying a firm handshake will create a first impression. When you shake someone and your hands are shaky, or are sweaty there's a there's an impression that you are either nervous or uncertain about the meeting that's the impression that you create 
when you have a firm handshake with someone and the person hand feels like you want to break the person the person thinks you are naturally a hard person to deal with that's the flip side of having a firm handshake but an appropriate and firm handshake will let the person know that you are a serious person you are also a determined person to do what you intend to do that's the situation so tip number two is that you have a firm handshake and like zig ziglar suggests for you to improve your self-image you need to join the smile the firm handshake and the compliment club what does tip number three say to us and by the way let me pause at this time to say if you're online watching and you need to make a comment please feel free to make a comment and uh, if you need to ask a question feel free to ask the question if you want to interact in any form just feel free uh, by the comment section and post your comments and i will uh, i will relate with you i will interact with you in that regard i hope um, that will help us to have an interactive session thank you so much now i go to tip number three i do not intend to stay long today on this broadcast because i just want to throw in just um, some a, a sniper as it were um, if, if you understand what i mean the third tip is the eye contact tip eye contact again let me place a caveat on this. Depending on what part of the world you are operating, your eye contact may be interpreted or misinterpreted in a way that you do not intend for it to be misinterpreted or to be interpreted, rather. Now, many years ago in the United States of America, a research was conducted because in the U.S., during investigations the investigator will expect you to have eye contact with him or her and if you took your eyes off the investigator it was interpreted as if you had something to hide it was interpreted that you were lying okay that's based on the u.s what they discovered that a number of times when they investigated Africans, Africans didn't look at them in the eye. The reason being that back here in Africa, um, it was considered rude to look at people in the eyes when communicating, especially people who were older or people who were asking you questions and questions in this regard being investigative questions it was considered to be too rude to stare people in the eye in fact on several occasions my own dad beat me for staring him in the eye and so the research revealed that as africans it was only respectful to bow your eyes or take your eyes off the person you were talking to and a review was done when investigating Africans as it is. Now, but regardless of that, the best practice around the globe is that you look at people in their eyes when communicating with them. Because they can read your eyes from your eyes whether you are being truthful or not. Whether you are being straightforward or uh, dubious as it is and that's the reality of life i've made consistent effort to continue to get my children to look at me in the eyes while we communicate because i've understood so much that i can read a lot of things through their eyes 
a lot of things through their eyes without them even speaking. So, eye contact is very good and very important and beneficial for us as leaders. When speaking to a crowd of persons, look at them in the eyes and there's a trick. Do not pick out one person to stare the person in the eye. Just look slightly above their heads if they are sitting and you are standing. And you know what? Everybody will think you are looking at them in the eyes. When asking questions amongst children, for example, or um, even amongst adults, when asking questions, investigative questions, when you stare to the eyes of people, the guilty ones will turn away their faces from you. They become distracted. So eye contact is good. One, because it creates a rapport. It creates friendship. When you look at people in the eyes, don't stare for too long because you cause them to quake. You cause them to shiver, especially for people who are subordinates to you in your workplace or even in the family. Don't stare too long at them in the eyes. And when you communicate with people, don't also constantly look away from them. Once in a while, look at them in the eyes, take your eyes off, look at them in the eyes and take your eyes off. Don't stare for too long and don't hide your eyes for too long. All these are tips that are helpful. They are tips that are fundamental for your relationship with the persons that you relate with. Now, there's this quote that I have which for me is quite important. It says, eye contact is way more intimate than words will ever be. Eye contact is way more intimate than words will ever be. That's Faraz Kazi. Eye contact is way more intimate than words will ever be. And I agree wholeheartedly with this quote. So I advise again that as you relate with people, you look at them in the eyes. I did not say stare. I said look at them in the eyes and take off your eyes for a few seconds. Come back and look at them in the eyes. That way they know you are being sincere, you are being honest, and you are committing yourself to whatever you are stating to them. The fourth tip, which is also very critical, is a tip that has to do with nodding. A tip that has to do with nodding. Now, if I, head, if I nod my head in this direction, I'm sure that nearly everybody watching this will appropriately interpret it. If I nod my head forward, my guess is that everyone watching me now will properly interpret. If I nod backward, you will properly also interpret. Why? Because nodding is a body language that sends signals to people. You cannot be saying yes and nodding back and uh, left and right. You cannot say yes in this form. But if you nod back and forth, anybody who looks at you supposedly thinks you have approved of what they are doing or you are saying a yes to whatsoever you are asking them or, or they are asking you for. So, this is quite important, even as leaders. Why? Because nothing signifies or signals acceptance. If you nod forward, backward, people will accept. 
But if you shake your head to the, from the left to the right, people think that you are rejecting something. Okay? So when you speak to a crowd, watch what people do with their heads. Those who are approving of what you are saying will be nodding forward and backward. Those who are disapproving will shake their heads from the left to the right. Exaggerated nodding signals anxiety. So when you communicate with people and you um, exaggerate excessively or you exaggerate your nodding, people just interpret that you are anxious and you are under anxiety. All right? So please take note of these body languages because they are rightful for the interpretation of whatever we do. Johann Stoller says, a good meditation, even when it is interrupted by occasional nodding, is much more beneficial than many outward religious exercises. Now, this is not saying that nodding is good, uh, nodding is bad, but he just simply states to us that when you nod, all right, you send some signal, you send some message to the hearts of people. The fifth tip, again, like I suggested today to people, I won't be staying long, so please just bear with me as I'm running through to, to, to round up this. The fifth tip is the tip of avoiding barriers. Avoiding barriers. Now, when we speak, most people do not know that we're setting up barriers even by our body language. Now, if I fold my arms, okay, by folding my arms, I'm sending a message. I don't know how many of us have watched how Hitler um, gave his speeches or how Hitler inspected facilities that were created for the Second World War. You will realize that where he didn't want any debate or argument, his hands were always folded. Where he was paying good attention, critical attention to the details, his hands were folded at the back. Now, some of those ways in which we fold our hands tells people whether we're listening or not at all. For you to have a good body language, you must avoid folding of arms. You must avoid creating barriers between you and people. And some of the tips that can send such signals is that you must avoid crossing your arms and legs. When you are sitting, listening to, um, receiving an interview or going through an interview, do not cross your legs because it sends a signal that you are not listening or that what you say is authoritative enough that you do not want anybody's suggestion. When you create these barriers, you suggest that you are not open to other opinions. And my advice to us today is that we must resist the urge to create barriers. At all costs, do all that is within your power to avoid creating barriers, to avoid setting barriers between you and people. And when you speak to people, okay, take away every table in front of you, take away every uh, podium before you. In fact, you can move away from the podium or move away from the people. That way, the people know or think that you sincerely want to communicate with them. The podium and the table are... are, are non-living things, but they send a signal. They send a huge signal to what, whoever watches or listens to us. 
So at all costs, take away barriers from before you. Finally, let me share some tips on what to do and what not to do, but particularly what to avoid. And I need to emphasize this so we can truly understand how to communicate very well with our body language. Number one, stop watching the clock or watching your wristwatch when talking with people. What does that say to people? It just simply says you are in a hurry to leave them. That whatever they are saying is not important to your attempt to move away from them. That's harmful. Every time you look at the watch, you send a negative signal. When someone is addressing you and you are watching, taking a watch at the clock or your wristwatch, you are telling the person that the person is wasting your time and he or she ought to be leaving quickly. That isn't helpful. That isn't good. How about exaggerated gestures? This can be too dramatic. You remember when, well, again, it has happened several times when politicians go to a certain place and they cry. People, well, when they do it once, you think they are genuine, but when they do it a second or third time, and nothing changes about the actions that they take, you know that these are exaggerated gestures. And exaggerated gestures will not help anybody. Number three, stop turning yourself away from people. You cannot turn your back against those to which you are speaking to. When you watch movies, when you watch dramas on TV sets, and the drama is consisting of people who just constantly give you their back it leaves an impression that you are not the person is not keen for you to see or to know what the person is intended on doing so also when you speak and turn your back against people they just simply know that you are not interested in them The fourth is that you must stop slouching when sitting because it sends a signal that you're not interested in what is ongoing. That whatever is going on is either distracting, time-wasting, or just disturbing you. Now, this can be very very, very dangerous and it isn't helpful. Finally, do not fidget when you talk with people. Do not fidget. A number of us love fidgeting. Okay? A number of us love fidgeting. That isn't helpful because it just shows you are anxious, you are not serious, there's someone chasing you, there are certain things that you should be doing and you're not doing right now or whatsoever. All right? All this, all this sends signals that you didn't intend to send from the onset. All right? So, for you to have good body language, you must learn these tips. They are exceptionally helpful. They are exceptionally helpful, and you need to learn them. Okay? 
Let me stop at this point to say a big thank you to everyone for time taking to be with me um, and sharing this discussion. All right? Um, let me just make a slight announcement. Hopefully, hopefully, I will be starting a TV program on um, terrestrial TV. And um, I'm intending on um, raising support, raising friends who would uh, uh, like to be a part and parcel of, of, uh, of what I am doing. So, um, at Born to Lead, we will intend that if you have the means, you can help out with what we do. Now, I've just placed the account number on the screen for Born to Lead. Um, like I said, we're trying to explore taking this to the TV station, and we're hoping to raise fundings for that to do a program for a quarter 13 slots from the terrestrial TV that I got um, would cost 400,000 Naira for 13 episodes. 400,000 Naira for 13 episodes. I just plead with you because I intend to do this to take it to a broader perspective and to allow other people to see what we're doing. So I plead with you by looking at the account number if you have any form of contribution, you want to be a partner in this um, development, please feel free to send funds to this um, account number. And um, at the appropriate time, uh, you will begin to see us on TV. Um, a number of people I've made contact with have started to respond, and I'm grateful to all such persons. Uh, but this is throwing it out to, the, um, to every well-meaning individual who has learned from this lesson and is willing to learn some more, and is willing to extend it to a number of people out there. I would expect your contributions. I would expect that you be a partner with us in this um, life-giving goal. And I do hope that um, um, eventually we'll go beyond or surpass our, our goals as they were. At this point, I will come to an end of today's broadcast and to say a big thank you to everyone who has been a part and parcel of this uh, program. See you next week, Wednesday, with a brand new topic and um, a brand new challenge. One thing I'm hoping to do now is to begin to challenge you as I teach, give you a bit of a challenge of an assignment to do, and hopefully you will catch in on that. Thank you so much, and have a 